Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a look at the situation where we have some damping involved in the simple harmonic motion. So here we still have the same spring with spring constant k, the same mass with mass m in kilograms, but now the object is oscillating back and forth inside a tank that has some sort of viscous fluid as a good example for a damping factor. And so as it's moving back and forth, it's going to feel the resistance of that fluid. The greater the viscosity of the fluid, the greater the damping. And so what we're going to find then is that the force, the damping force, is going to be somehow proportional to the velocity of the motion of this object. The faster it moves through the fluid, the greater the damping force. The slower it moves through the fluid, the smaller the damping force. So it does depend on the velocity, but it also of course depends upon the viscosity of the fluid. So then if we're going to turn this into an equation, we then have to have some sort of uh, constant that represents the viscosity of the fluid. And so one way to represent that would be to say that the velocity, that the force of the damping, and I'll just write it as F sub D, is going to be equal to some constant B times the velocity of the object. Remember that x dot is really a representation of the first derivative of the position with respect to time, which is equal to the velocity of the object. One more thing though, because I left a little bit of space here, and there's a reason why I did. Notice that when the object is moving downward, the resistive force, almost like a friction force, will be acting in the opposite direction. So as the object's moving downward, the, the viscosity, the damping force, will be pushing upward. And if the object is moving upward, the, the damping force will be acting downward. So I need a negative sign here so that the force, the direction of the force, will be opposite to the direction of the velocity of the object. So now, how does that fit into the overall equation? Well, we'll get there in just a moment. So remember that when we use uh, Newton's second law, we can write that F net is equal to the mass times acceleration of the object. Now in this case, instead of writing acceleration, we're going to write x double dot. x double dot simply means the second derivative of the position with respect to time. So we can write that F net is equal to the mass times x double dot. All right, now, what are the forces acting on it? Well, the spring force is still there. Remember, that would be minus kx is the force exerted by the spring, which is proportional to the distance away from the equilibrium point, if you consider this here, x equals zero, as the equilibrium point. Then we also have the damping force, which is going to be equal to this. So it's going to be minus b x double dot. And so those two forces together constitute the net force on the object, and that must therefore equal to the mass times its acceleration x double dot. Now, think about the units. Notice that mass times acceleration represents force, and force is, of course, expressed in newtons, which means that k times x should be in newtons, and b times x double dot, ooh, not double dot, b x times single dot, it's x times b times velocity, so b times x dot, or b times velocity, should also be in terms of newtons. So let's find out what the units for b should be in order to make that happen. So starting with kx as an example, if we look at kx, the units for kx would be uh, k would be newtons per meter, and x would be meter. So when we multiply these together, of course, we get the units of newton. When I put little brackets around it, that's my way of expressing those are the units of that particular expression. So what about b times x dot? So b times x dot. So we don't know what the units for b should be, so we'll just put a little question mark there. And units for x dot, which is velocity, would be meters per second. So now we can notice that the units for newtons, the units for newtons would be kilograms, meters per second squared. And notice we already have meters per second, so we still need kilograms per second, which means that the units for b times x dot would be kilograms, that's kilograms per second times meters per second, which gives us units for um, for force. So that determines that the units for B, that constant representing the viscosity or the resistance of the fluid, is equal to kilograms per second. All right, so now we know that each of these terms will be definitely expressed in terms of newtons. One more thing that we want to do is we want to move everything over to one side. So we write it as a more general form of the differential equation. So zero is equal to mx double dot plus bx dot plus k times x. So now we have a more general form of the, of the uh, differential equation. Now one more thing is we probably want to divide both sides of the equation by m. So let's do that. So we end up with 0 is equal to x double dot 
plus b over m times x dot plus k over m times x. And notice that k over m still represents the, the angular frequency of the oscillation without damping. So in other words, omega sub naught can be written as the square root of k over m. In other words, omega sub naught squared is equal to k over m, which is what well, we could potentially put there, but we'll just leave it as k over m for now. And so this now becomes the differential equation that defines the motion with damping included. So now to solve that, if we want to know how to manipulate or how to figure out things with simple harmonic motion, if there's damping involved, we have to find the general solution to this equation and then apply that to the various cases of what can, kind of damping we could have. With damping, we can have what we call overdamping, underdamping, or critical damping. When you have overdamping, the damping is very strong, the damping force is very strong, so the moment you put the object out of, out of, uh, away from the equilibrium point, it will go back to the equilibrium point very, very slowly if the damping is very strong. If it's underdamped, what happens then is you put the object away from the equilibrium point, and it will begin to oscillate back and forth. The frequency of oscillation will be a little bit smaller than what it would be without damping, and it would continue to oscillate, but the amplitude would diminish, diminish, diminish over time, and eventually would go to zero. Again, the weaker B is, or the, the smaller B is, the longer that will take, the stronger B is, the quicker that will happen. And finally, there's such a thing as critical damping, where you put the object away from equilibrium, let it go, and it goes back to equilibrium with basically a half an oscillation, and gets back to the, to the equilibrium point rather quickly, and it will not typically overshoot that. It will simply just kind of go back to the equilibrium point relatively quickly. So those are three cases of oscillatory motion with damping, over damping, under damping, and critical damping that we'll have to talk about when we solve this general equation. And so in the next several videos, first we'll solve the equation, and then we'll look at the various cases of how under damping, over damping, and critical damping occur using that equation.